yes, 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 welcome. This is a genius idea. It's definitely one to revitalize the game, and I'm about to tell you why. You might think it's a dumb idea, you might think it's gonna feel pretty bad for people with millions of gold to lose it all, but once I am done, but once I am done explaining what has been brewing in my brain, you will understand, and you will agree. So, the point I have been stewing on for quite a while is why are people so dissatisfied with the secondary facets of the game? Because when you think about it, Mythic Plus is cool, Mythic Plus is good and enjoyable, and raiding is still very, very high quality. If there is one thing even the most stalwart criticizer of Blizzard and WoW as a whole needs to agree with and accept is that raiding is still very, very good, very, very high quality. Then you have arenas and battlegrounds which have pretty much remained the same, except maybe some more arenas added into the game, pretty much, but mostly it stayed the same, so why has there been so much negativity around the game? And not just now, this is not something because there has been the lawsuit against Blizzard and plenty of people complaining, this is all the way back from Worlds of Draenor, right? From Warlords to Legion to BFA and now there have been several times, several complaints about the state of the game. Which makes you think, makes you wonder, because if Mythic Plus is very good and the raid is very good and Arena and Battlegrounds have continued on the same level for a while now, and those are basically the only endgame activities you can do, why are people still complaining, right? It makes you think, what's the, what's the secret here? The secret, of course, is that regardless of which one is your favorite endgame activity, you will still be spending more time overall outside of that activity. It might be Island Expeditions, it might be Torghast, it might be World Quests, or daily quests, whichever, in the end you will likely be spending more time outside. Which means, even though none of those activities I mentioned are the crucial part that you want to spend your time in, when you put them all together they make up a very important part of the game. And that is where exactly we have seen most of the complaints. We haven't seen too many complaints about the raid, have we? You know, in Legion, in BFA, in Shadowlands, we haven't seen too many complaints about Mythic Plus. Maybe about the Mythic Plus meta, sure, but not about the idea in and of itself. Same for the balance in PvP, but the whole idea of arenas is very, very simple. It's difficult to ask for innovation in an entire activity which is putting two guys to beat up two other guys. Or three versus three, you know, it's, it's very difficult to change. What isn't difficult to change, and it is the reason why so many complaints have been coming through recently, and by recently I mean years, is the open world. So the story, the class hall mission, the campaign mission, and now the covenant mission, other convoluted ideas like locking people in a specific covenant, or bad systems, or maybe good systems which had been bad for like over a year before Blizzard kept trying to fix it over time, things like Azerite armor, maybe things like Legion legendaries, things like the scarcity of Anima, which on top of that gave you no real power to your character, so it was even more annoying, and then you had other systems like the Bentic gear, which was very RNG heavy, the corruption system, which was even more RNG heavy, the entire existence of Titan Forging is another thing. So all these things outside of your main activities you could have done in the game created some annoyances, right? Some complaints Planes. people were frustrated. And this is something that makes you think, because when you go back to TBC for example, I'm going to use TBC as the pinnacle example, just because TBC Classic is out, and maybe more people will get the comparisons, but this could be said in the same way for Vanilla and even for What of the Lich King. As I was saying, it is somewhat weird, because if you go back to TBC, TBC didn't even have a story. You didn't even have to worry about time-gating of the Covenant campaign, because there was no campaign in TBC. You didn't have to worry about how boring or maybe frustrating Corthia was, because TBC didn't even give you any new zones from the original ones you had at the start. Maybe the last one, you know, the Isle of Caldanas at the very end. Same can be said for some bad systems, or good systems introduced badly. You didn't even have that issue in TBC, because there were no systems in TBC. There was the gear with the sockets that you put gems in. That's it. There was no Bentic gear, there was no corruption gear, there was no Titan forging, there was no artifact weapon with relics, or Azerite armor, or Shadow Domination, nothing at all. And yet, people weren't complaining in TBC about the lack 
of like anything to do. And I can tell you this because I was there and I played TBC and people were not complaining about Blizzard, the game is empty. Blizzard, there is nothing to do. So why? people weren't complaining. Because for how I laid it down, it does indeed look like there was nothing to do. You know, the pinnacle of TBC was getting out of school and then logging in at 5 p.m. in the afternoon, going into the elemental plateau of Nagrand and farm fire elementals for modes of fire for five hours. That was the pinnacle of TBC open world content. Imagine, unironically, if that was what you did today. You log into the game and you're expected to go in the mall, find some mechanical shadow dogs and farm their claws for five hours. You see, it's kind of weird. So why did it work back then? Were people just dumber? Did they just have a different understanding of how to play an MMO? Well, that is likely. But the other reason is because gold, money, currency, the main currency in the game was actually meaningful was actually worthwhile to get, which is the problem we have now. Gold has been devalued to insane levels, and there has been a stretch in who is poor and who is rich in this game. Back in TBC, if you had something like 300 gold, you were poor. If you had 3,000 gold, you were rich. Nowadays, if you have 100,000 gold, you are poor. If you have a million gold, you are not rich. If you have a million gold, you buy one mythic BOE and now you're poor. That's it. It's over. Then the development of the digital world and people being much more used to it made it so that things like boosting, things like just carrying people for literally everything became more and more popular. The discrepancy in gold became bigger and bigger and bigger. Even things, if you want to go that deep, like multiboxing and botting became even more widespread. And this became an issue because it meant Blizzard no longer had this sort of idea of how much money people had. They could no longer release items, BOE craftable items for people to get. You had tons of craftable items in vanilla, you had tons of craftable items in TBC, you know, every profession, leather working, blacksmithing, tailoring, they had a total of something like 40 different epic craftable items and then Wrath started having a little less. Cataclysm had borderline none and by Mists of Pandaria you basically had two or three left that were craftable. And the entire system of, for example, patterns dropping from raids, which had very high item level, etc., etc., was completely dead. We went down to the very bare bones way of all of the patterns are automatically learned from your profession and everyone can craft the same thing and it's just gonna take a fixed amount of time because now everything is cheap to craft but you have a 24 hour cooldown on how many of them you can craft every day. This was given the final nail in the coffin with Worlds of Draenor, with the garrison. People started getting flooded with gold, on top of the garrison you had the shipyard to be able to get even more gold, you had speed leveling becoming a thing in Worlds of Draenor, which meant people were now parking 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 characters in the garrison farming gold. Blizzard nerfed it in Legion, but Legion still had a mission table that still allowed you to get plenty of gold throughout all of Legion. So there was an even bigger discrepancy between people who did play Worlds of Draenor and could have gotten tons of gold and people who didn't, people who could play Legion and people who didn't. Fast forward to Shadowlands and now we have a massive divide. You have people with 200,000 gold, people with 2 million, people with 500,000 and people with 6 million. And this, my younglings, is a big deal because now it means that Blizzard can no longer use gold to bait you, basically, to push you into doing open world content. Back then, they could. Back then, literally everything you were doing in the open world for vanilla, for TBC, even Wrath, was just to get gold. For Wrath, part of it was daily quests, which already started making through after the handful of ones you had in, in TBC with the Shatar Skyguard, the Ogrila, but most of the other stuff you were doing was just for gold. You know, farming moats, farming for mining or for herbalism, farming tokens for the Alder or the Scryers. That was basically the thing you were doing outside, just grinding, because you really, really wanted gold. Whereas nowadays, Blizzard, because they can't rely on gold anymore, they had to be forced to start splitting everything they want you to get 
in different currencies, be it Anima or Azerite or Artifact Power and then Titan Residuum and then Artifact Research, Soul Ash and then Soul Cinders and then Infused Rubies or Offerings. You know, every tiny thing needs to have its own compartment of a currency because Blizzard can't fucking use gold anymore. And this is annoying because before nobody stopped you from saying, oh, I need 10 primal life. But you know what? I actually know this very good spot for farming Primal Shadow. And you know what? Primal Shadow sells for more than Primal Life. So I am going to farm Primal Shadow and then I am going to sell the Primal Shadow for gold and with that gold I am going to buy Primal Life. So instead of grinding 10 Primal Life I can grind 15 Primal Shadow and with the money I gain, I can buy 10 Primal Life, and then I even have some money left over. That was something doable because you had one currency, gold. Now, if you are farming Anima, you can't fucking trade it for Archivist Research. If you want infused rubies, you can't get some offerings and trade them in for rubies, and this is going to limit a lot of what you can do. Which ultimately brings us to the solution. The current gold that we have needs to be moved to the currency tab. Something like old gold, Azeroth gold, whatever explanation you want. That gold would still be able to buy you anything up to Shadowlands. So literally every single thing, old world stuff, it can be mounts, it can be pets, toys, it can be transmog pieces, old profession stuff, anything can still be bought with that gold. But every single thing that comes out in the next expansion will be with a new currency. Resetting the currency will mean that everyone will need that currency for the stuff that's in the new expansion. There will be much less of a room for people, for example, to start boosting and selling stuff for that currency. Because all the people still need that for all the stuff in the new expansion. It will be much less likely for them to be willing to pay with the new currency. This could allow Blizzard to, for example, re-expand their crafting system. They could start re-adding at a similar level of mythic raiding gear. Maybe, you know, three or something item levels lower, but generally something that anyone would want. And it would give you a much bigger incentive of spontaneously going out in the world and doing things that can reward you this currency. If you think about it, nowadays, there is very little that can, you know, push you into going into the open world and do something. There are world quests. World quest giving you anima, which you don't care about. A world quest giving you some pet battle stuff, which you don't care about. World quest giving you reputation for some faction, you don't care about that. A world quest giving you gear, which has been out-leveled like six months ago. Again, don't care about. So none of those world quests are going to give you the push the incentive to go out in the open world. And sadly, this is something Blizzard thought it was good. Remember, Blizzard spontaneously decided for this when they had world quests, endless world quests for artifact power in Legion and then world quests for Azerite power in BFA. They literally stated that they were going to come in Shadowlands giving you anima power in world quests, but anima power would no longer be tied to your character power, so you didn't have a reason to go in the open world anymore. And this was supposed to be good, because now people have more time to do what they want. You no longer have to have the dreadful feeling of logging in every day, opening the map and selecting the 10 different AP world quests you have to do every day if you want to keep up your character, right? That was supposed to be a win for us. Instead, unfortunately for them, they are back at square one. Because yes, people now don't do anima world quests because it's irrelevant now, but they are still complaining because there is nothing to do. Because it's not that Blizzard has replaced those world quests you're not doing anymore with something else. There are other ways, of course, other tricks to, to lure you into going out in the open world, but they are, you know, a little bit less flavorful for an MMO. For example, a very simple way to fix this would be to reintroduce the crafting system, re-pull out plenty of these very powerful crafting things you can get, but make everything bind on pickup. So make everything tied to your character. This way, it doesn't matter how much gold you have. It doesn't matter who is rich and who is poor because you have to earn everything yourself. You can't go into the auction house and buy it. The issue, of course, is that at the end of the day, this is an MMO. So 
the trading, the social aspect of I have this and I need that, you have that and you need this, why don't we trade? That aspect would go away with all of this bind on pickup stuff. So using a new currency would be an easier fix for this issue. It is, you know, a very unique problem. The fact that it's not the primary activities that are being complained about, the Mythic Plus or the raiding, it's the collection of the secondary activities which you do in and around the primary activities that are disappointing people. And I think the gold reset would go a long way into making people put a lot more importance into gold, into the currency that they want. Because right now, the solutions that Blizzard have tried, which is shower you with 20 different currencies every time that change every tier because they need to keep things fresh and resetting every time, it's just not working. They are too compartmentalized, they are only working for a handful of things and they cannot be traded between one another, so they don't work as well as if you had a single currency usable for everything. Unfortunately, the single currency usable for everything has been fucked up since Worlds of Draenor and doesn't work anymore, so it needs to be fixed. Completely stripping people of that currency that they earned over the years would feel kind of bad, so retiring the currency while still allowing people to use that currency for all of the older stuff seems like the more sensible solution, so to speak. And this was just one of the many solutions that I have for the future expansion. We are pretty much all on copium. We are living with the expectation that Blizzard is pretty much throwing away this expansion, you know, delayed by a month because of the pandemic complications, the working from home, remote and all of that. The first big patch of the expansion delayed by like three months later than a normal patch would have come in. Very likely there is not going to be a 9.3 patch with a second major raid after Sanctum of Domination, very likely there is just going to be one big patch, 9.2, and that's gonna be it. So our tanks filled with Hopium are for hoping that because of this Blizzard is going to be able to put more time into the next expansion. Something similar pretty much to what happened in Worlds of Draenor, when Worlds of Draenor was dropped very early after Elfire Citadel was launched and they got more time to plan Legion, right? This is a similar situation to that. That being said, with these hopeful dreams, we can stop. Thank you guys for watching this uh, delusional video. I hope you enjoyed this what if fairy tale. If you want to support the channel, you can like the video, leave a comment or even subscribe. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, this entire video was an hallucination. I have been awake for way too long. I don't even know what I said. 